Uh, here is the retain ratio of Telangana. What this suggests is just gives you the sense of anti-incumbency against K. Chandrasekhar Rao. Out of the 88 seats that the BRS had won last time, they are currently trailing on 61% of those seats, retaining only 34 of those 88. And the big wins are coming for the Congress, which has bagged 50 seats, which the BRS had last time. The BJP has picked up two seats the BRS had last time. Others have picked up two. For the Congress, it had 19 seats that it won last time. They're retaining 74% of those. They've lost five. Four of those are going to the BRS, none to the BJP, none to the AIMF. So the BJP had only one seat, so that doesn't really uh, make much of a difference. Uh, let's look at the BRS's gains and losses and where these are coming from. In the northern part of Telangana, the BRS has, is currently trailing on 20 seats they had last time. In the central part of Telangana, the BRS is down 12 from the last time. In Hyderabad, the BRS is down 3. In the southern region of Telangana, the BRS is down 15. Where are the Congress's gains and losses? As I said, and this is the magic and the power of the election intelligence dashboard, which we've worked so hard with the India Today Data Intelligence Unit to power live for you. Uh, 19 of the leads for the Congress coming from the north, 14 of the leads for the Congress coming from central, Three, interestingly, from Hyderabad. The Congress was supposed to be a wipeout in Hyderabad. That doesn't seem to be the case. Fourteen of those leads, T.S. Sudhir, coming from the south. And interestingly, even in Chhattisgarh, the Congress is now back in the lead. So our poll, I mean, beyond a point, we don't really care who wins, but we want our poll to be correct. Congress, again in the lead in Chhattisgarh. Our poll is also 3-1. Our huh? poll, as of now, is 3-1. We are completely spot on in Madhya Pradesh. We are completely spot on in Telangana. We are completely spot on in Chhattisgarh. It's in Rajasthan. No, but we were at 100. We, but it's it's there, it's there, it's there, 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 there we will say Rajdeep won, uh, Pradeep Gupta. Ah, no, no, I think it's yeah, But I, 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 it was 100, 100 in Rajasthan. If I, if yeah, I put it here, it was 100 in Rajasthan. In, in yeah. Chhattisgarh, the BG, uh, Congress is ahead. But both Singhdeo and Baghel are trailing. But by a very narrow know. margin. So Vijay Baghel is leading by just about 1,000 uh, votes against uh, Bhupesh Baghel in Patan. So that's not a... Very big Rahul lead. Kamal, 9 p.m. on your News Today group. I have given my number 2 plays 2. As of now, 2 is playing 2. Rajdeep, right? I must tell our viewers, no, no, it's very it's slippery. It's on, it's very on, slippery. One second. The numbers, we have to stick, the numbers, Rajdeep, we have to stick with are our post-poll numbers. If sure. the post-poll numbers are right, but, then we no, are... As of now, as of now, 3 of our post-poll numbers are spot on. In Rajasthan, we had given the edge to the Congress in a tight race. All I'm saying, please see my number if you can. <laughs> but Rajdeep, you know, it might two, be too two, premature. Two, like, like Raman Singh from the BJP in Chhattisgarh, who's already tweeted that Suraj is gone for the BJP. So it's the problem, no, no, the problem for, the B, for the BJP in Chhattisgarh at the moment is that the rural seat still, the Congress is leading 41 to 31. It's in urban and semi-urban that the BJP is leading the Congress. So, in fact, in urban it's 6-3, in uh, semi-urban 5-4. They will need to make up that gap in the rural seats, okay. the tribal areas could still be critical, but it could go down to the wire. Okay, so let's, Chhattisgarh could go to the wire. Let's spend a moment in Chhattisgarh to try and see if and what can change. Uh, so let me look at um, the margin calculator for Chhattisgarh, which will give you a sense of how many seats are currently being won and lost with a margin of less than 1,000 votes. So here it is on your screen. There are 72 seats where the margin at this moment is less than 1,000. And if it's less than 1,000 as the votes get counted, the situation could change. The Congress is leading on 38 of those. Uh, the BJP is leading on 34. So there are only 18 seats where the margin is more than 1,000. In the others, there's still a tight contest going on. So Chhattisgarh will keep us busy and engaged for a while. You were talking about how the Congress is doing on the tribal seats, how the BJP is doing on the tribal seats in Chhattisgarh. There are 47 seats where the tribal population is more than 20%. The Congress is leading on 27 such seats. The BJP is leading on 20 such seats. Uh, amongst the Dalit-dominated seats of Chhattisgarh, there are 16 seats where the Dalit population is more than 16%. The BJP is leading on 8. The Congress is leading on 8. In the Sahu-dominated seats, uh, 26 such seats where the Sahu community population is more than 20%. The Congress is leading on 12. The BJP is leading on 14. In the Banya-dominated seats of Chhattisgarh, the Congress is leading on two, the BJP on one. In the Thakur dominated seats, uh, six seats with the Thakur population is more than 20%. Uh, the Congress leading on two, the BJP Rajdeep on four. So Chhattisgarh still very much in the and fray. The super over could possibly come in Chhattisgarh. And the reason why Chhattisgarh becomes important is there's huge difference, I think, between 2-2 two, two and 3-1.
At 3 1, the BJP is balle balle all the way. At 2 2, the Congress will clutch onto its straws and say, look, we retained one and we've gained one. So I think that's how important it is now in Chhattisgarh. Charan Singh Sapra, spokesperson of Congress, and Tuhin Sinha, spokesperson of the BJP, joining us. Uh, Charan Singh Sapra, to you first, not looking good for the Congress at the moment. I'm afraid, Mr. Sapra, as of now, you are only comfortable in Telangana, south of the Vindhyas. North India is either rejecting you or clearly putting the BJP in a fight with you, as in Chhattisgarh. Mr. Sapra. Okay, we're having a problem with his line. Let's go to Tuin Sina. Tuin, you've dressed in the appropriate colors. You obviously knew which way the wind was blowing this morning. Well, the country is increasingly going to get saffronized from here, and this is going to mark the end of the Indy alliance. You know, Rajiv, two things are very clear. Number one, when it comes to Madhya Pradesh, the combined credibility of Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji and Shivraj Singh Chauhan ji is very clear on the ground. And on the, in the other states, Chhattisgarh and Rajasthan, look at the hatred that people today have against the Congress hypocrisy. You, it is very important to know that, you know, when you travel on the ground, I have heard you mention in one of your programs, in, you know, when it came to Madhya Pradesh, there was no anger against the existing government. But the anger is against the Congress, despite them not being in power. Why? Because, number one, they presided over all the Saratan attacks which was happening in the last three months. They are the hub of corruption in all the three states which they managed to retain, which they managed to win in the last uh, two years or so, Karnataka or Himachal. They have presided over a financial anarchy with their fake promises. So I think, you know, this is, uh, there, is a, there is a sense of disgruntlement in the people against against the Congress party, including in Congress allies. And Akhilesh Yadav has been the most vocal against the Congress party. So I think this is going to mark the end of the Indy alliance. And for the first time, there is a pro-incumbency factor. Even after 10 years, BJP will go into the 2024 with a very clear pro-incumbency -incum sentiment for the central government.